Uh, this came together very quickly, uh, just as the nuclear ban treaty uh, was ratified, boom, in a, in a, very quickly in the last minute. Uh, my, for those of you who are, uh, you know, uh, that I don't know, my name is Bob Dodge, and this is my wife Kristen over here in the corner. And for my entire adult uh, formative life, I have been dedicated to abolishing nuclear weapons. I'm a family doctor by day and a nuclear activist by night, and, and I consider it an absolute extension of my practice as a, what I call a prescription for survival. So I've been involved in this for actually over 40 years. Uh, the, the nuclear age is 75 years old this year, and today is really a rem uh, just a momentous time. Uh, it's interesting. So many people in the world, young people in the world, don't even know how many nuclear weapons they have. Currently, there are 13,400 nuclear weapons that are more powerful than the weapons dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the use of 100 of those weapons would actually eventually lead to a climate change and drop in climate that would also, it's estimated by credible scientists around the world, kill over 2 billion people from less than one half of 1%, okay? And they, would, and they, do, they don't know borders. We would have people dying here in the United States. People are food insecure because such a dramatic famine would ensue. So, and it was our organization, Physicians for Social Responsibility, that came out with that study, which has been verified over and over, and we're working with the National Centers for Atmospheric Research and the National Academies of Science. That knowledge led the non-nuclear nations of the world to say, enough, enough. We must abolish and ban, make these weapons illegal. There's a, there's a treaty. One of the most significant treaties to date had been what's called the Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is 50 years old. And that treaty said all nuclear nations must work in good faith to abolish their nuclear weapons. Well, 50 years after that, we still have 13,400 weapons. Not very good faith. And, uh, you know, at the United Nations concert, uh, the United Nations Convention for the Non-Proliferation Treaty in 2010, the non-nuclear nations said, enough. We're, we can't leave it to the, we can't be bullied by the nuclear nine. We need to move this. And from that point forward, 2010, we started convening international humanitarian uh, con uh, conventions, three of which occurred in 2013 and two and 14. Uh, and out of that, they said, the, the governor of Austria said, we must develop a nuclear ban treaty. And so in 2017, uh, the United Nations met to convene and rat to develop, write uh, and, and the nuclear ban treaty, which is called the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Kristen and I were at the United Nations in the, the weeks before that on behalf of PSR, and I was we, we were responsible for going to nations that hadn't signed up to participate in the conference to get them there. We went to 32 countries, and every single one of them showed up, and every one of them voted in favor. <laughs> Ultimately, the ban treaty was passed by 122 nations, with two nations voting, one voted against, which was the Netherlands, and one abstained, which was Singapore. And then the Netherlands voted against because they were, were a recipient of United States aid and military aid, and they were fearful that it would end if they voted in favor. They were an instrumental part in negotiating the treaty. That was 2017. The organization, which is actually exemplified by the, the, the monogram on our, on our tape, which I want everybody to take a look at. Oh, there it is. That's, I, that's the ICANN you know, logo. Uh, received then the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017 for negotiating the treaty. The treaty then went, was open for signature on September 21st of 2017, which is the International Day of Peace, for those of you who are aware. And from that point to yesterday, the press, we were working around the world to gather nations to support the treaty. Treaties, interesting enough, like landmine, the landmine ban, chemical weapons, biologic weapons, cluster munitions, go into force when 50 nations have ratified them. So it's been an, a long working process for these last three years. However, this is probably the fastest treaty to have been ratified on such a major weapon of mass destruction. So we've been watching, waiting, holding our breath. We have, we have over 80 nations who have signed, but then it has to go to their senates or their legislative bodies to be ratified. Okay? So we've been waiting and waiting. We know we have other countries in the wings. When were we going to get to 50? And it was interesting. Initially, we were concerned a month ago that it was going to happen too early, and it would potentially bring the treaty into ratification on Christmas Day, which we actually didn't want. We wanted to have its own special day in history. So then we were hoping that on Friday morning there was a an international meeting put together by Costa Rica, uh, by the and by 
uh, Norway, uh, by Jamaica and Nauru. They pulled an international meeting on Friday morning. I got up at five o'clock in the morning to watch the meeting because we were hoping that was going to be the day because yesterday was the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. It was founded to, to promote world peace and security. And there's no greater threat to our security and peace than nuclear weapons. So it did not happen on that eve. And we were a little frustrated. We were people from all over the world Zooming at 5 o'clock on Friday morning. However, yesterday as I was writing some op-eds, because I knew we had to get these ready, get ready to put out there, I was doing about 2 o'clock, and I got notified from, from Norway. It had just passed. It had just passed. Honduras delivered their articles of ratification. It actually make, it makes me choke up. It's so amazing. Honduras had ratified it. But in this COVID world, they couldn't get the formal papers to the United Nations in time for Friday. And so their embassy stayed open, because it's usually a Monday to Friday, even, even embassies have Monday to Friday office hours. They, they stayed open yesterday, and the United Nations agencies to receive treaties stayed open. So it happened about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon right, at, at that point. So at that point, I, I always say, you know, if a bomb dropped, we'd drop everything and get together. Well, I said a bomb didn't drop. It's time to drop everything and get together. So that's why we it's remarkable that it happened on the 75th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations. It's remarkable that it's happened in this 75th year since post Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And again, right now, the world is speaking and they're demanding. So today is a day of celebration and we thank every one of you for being here. Go to work, okay? And you know, with those 13,400 nuclear weapons, we need to abolish them. The interesting thing about this treaty, there will be no clear weapons tomorrow morning when we wake up. However, those weapons are now illegal. In any country, any, any company, any financial institution that invests, uh, develops, stores, transfers, uses, uh, develops, or threatens to use is now in breach of international law. That's a huge, huge thing, and that's ultimately how apartheid ended in South Africa. The, the banks, the institutions that supported apartheid were ostracized, they were stigmatized, and they could no longer do business. And they said, you know what? We don't make a lot of money from apartheid, but we sure make a lot by building schools and building homes and building hospitals. Same will happen with this. So I, again, if we don't blow ourselves up in the meantime, because of the financial side, we will abolish these weapons and get rid of every last one. And that's when we're finally safe on this planet. So, so so again, each of you was brought here and invited for a very special reason. You've all been part of the community, part of our community, and we love you all, and we thank you all. I want to say, yes, Susa. Oh, when you're done, I have, I want to share a short story how my father survived the atomic bomb yeah. falling on Nagasaki. Please, Please do, all right. Okay. Well, I just want to take a moment and say, again, is that each of you has, uh, you know, has been a significant part of this to us. And one thing we do, as I mentioned, the work starts tomorrow. In the United States, there is a movement called Back from the Brink, moving back from the brink of nuclear war. This movement nationally is a huge movement. We have 54 cities, six state legislative bodies, and over 350 organizations from the Sierra Club, the 350.org, to Federation of American Scientists, to basically every religious and faith group on the, on, in the country that have signed on. It's a breadth of our entire society, Veterans for Peace and the like. So that uh, Back from the Brink resolution, if you have not endorsed it, you may do so. You may do so. Kristen has her iPad today. You just go on. We've got hand sanitizer. Please sanitize before and sanitize after you do it. But you may endorse it. Before it is critical. And also, importantly, if you have an organization, you have a rotary club, you have a church group, you have a book club that is not endorsed, please do so. Because ultimately, when the people speak, the leaders will follow. And that's what this is about. So we really must do this. It is on us. Because I tell everybody, I've told for years, I have no doubt we'll get rid of nuclear weapons. We'll get rid of them through the legal time-bound uh, facility of the treaty, or we'll use them and blow ourselves up, and that will make them gone. There's no question, one way or the other, the choice is ours, and time is of the essence. We must do this. So again, I really encourage you to sign on to this. So this major grassroots movement is moving across this country incredibly. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud to say that, that my organization in Los Angeles, Physicians for Social Responsibility, is, responsibility is the national lead. We are the fiduciary and we are the body that's running this and doing it. And so if, again, everything has a little, you know, we ha we're up against tremendous financial pushback. 
Just this week, as the treaty is ready to be ratified, the United States, on behalf of our administration, contacted every one of the top point 47 nations and urged them to withdraw their signature. Wow. That's unbelievable, unprecedented, never been heard of. I said threatened. Signature. Okay, what's that? Threatened, not urged. Yes, threatened, threatened, <laughs> again. So, mm -hmm. at any rate, as I say, we, we are up against tremendous odds. We, if you're interested in how can I do something, we invite you to both endorse, we invite you to make a donation. You can give $5 a month. It's a sustaining, ongoing organization until we have these weapons gone. Uh, we're also working with the Union Concerned Scientists. There are other main scientific group, uh, but it's a very exciting movement. While here, Mary Hafner, raise your hand and say hello. Mary Hafner is on my board. She's an amazing lady who many of you know from and her husband, Matthew. Matt. And again, so Mary's on my board at CSR Los Angeles, so I'm so excited that she's here joining us today. I'm so excited that Susan's here because many of you aren't aware, this Back from the Brink resolution has been in existence for just a little over two years. Again, it's a major effort. And Ojai was the second city in the nation, okay, of which now there are, there are, four, there are <coughs> 46 cities, including Los Angeles, including Philadelphia, including Baltimore, including Portland. Ojai was the second city in the nation to endorse after Northampton, Massachusetts, which is where my co-chairman lives. So he got it on a couple weeks before us. But Ojai is this, the first city. Susan was on the city council and helped us push that through. This is a nuclear-free zone. This is our official. As you come into Ojai on all entrances, there's this sign. People don't even recognize, but this sign is there announcing to the world. We're a nuclear-free zone, which means, obviously, we don't have nuclear weapons, but we don't support them in any way, shape, or form. We, we would divest from all things nuclear. So any banks, any institutions that are involved, Ojai will not be involved with those. We'll look for alternatives therein. It's a huge thing. That was the first in the nation, and many cities, including the city of New York City, is following Ojai's model on that. So it's a huge thing. Uh, <clears throat> After we passed in Ojai, the city of Los Angeles unanimously passed it, uh, and then the state of California. And it was our own uh, Monique Limon, who I'd met and talked with, who took it to the state. So the state of California, both, both houses, it was a by, by house or by uh endorsement of the, the treaty. So again, another huge involvement. So 